Okay, uh, welcome to Bland Gaming's first game review. So, uh, welcome to my game garage. Got a lot of stuff up on the wall here, and hopefully I can uh, review some obscure stuff that maybe you haven't been exposed to. Uh, I enjoy role-playing games, board games, miniature games. Uh, as I get older, I can't really compete with the video games and whatnot, uh, but I still enjoy them. still like the video games, so we'll be talking about all those. So listen, this is the most boring channel on the internet. Uh, I'm pretty involved with uh, my career and family, but uh, I do enjoy gaming. I game about once a week, so I would qualify myself as a casual gamer. I've uh, been getting a lot more games in uh, since the... Uh, since the quarantine here is occurring, or the uh, stay-at-home order. But, so I thought I'd uh, take advantage of this time and maybe share with you uh, some of the games that I like to play, that I like to run. As far as role-playing games, we're going to talk about Alien today. Uh, this is a game by Free League. Uh, I, I, spoiler alert, I love it. And uh, our beer for the day for discussing Alien is going to be Irish Death, which is a dark, smooth ale, very fitting for a very dark and smooth uh, RPG out here. So a uh, little disclaimer, uh, I have a little bit of a bias. Um, I saw the original Alien in 1979 on a VHS tape uh, with my mom, who was, uh, my mom taught, you know, she taught uh, English and she taught uh, mythology and everything. So I watched Alien, I watched The Thing, uh, I watched all sorts of uh, very great science fiction when I was younger. So um, Alien and Aliens uh, were two of the most influential movies uh, that I've ever seen. So I walked into this with a great deal of bias, uh, positive bias for this product. And I will tell you that, uh, spoiler alert, it did not disappoint. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to sit down with you. I, I'm not going to, I don't have time to do flashy editing or anything like that. Like I said, I'm a very, I have a very busy, busy lifestyle right now. But what I want to do is I want to sit down with you as if we were just drinking a beer and uh, have you say, hey, you know, is this a game that I should buy? Uh, so we'll go ahead and I'll, I'll take you around the table here for some of the things. Uh, the, this is the actual book itself. Um, as you can see, it is, it is thickly bound. It is just high quality. Um, so, I mean, it is just, it is a great book. And if you have ever played any of Free League games, uh, you'll see that these this is very much on par with the quality. Uh, I do not work for Free League, but when you <laughs> when you see my reviews, uh, Free League is, is right now, at this point in my life, my favorite game publisher. Uh, they, they just, uh, they have yet to swing and miss as far as uh, I'm concerned with games. And Alien is, is just, uh, it is one of the top, uh, top aces in the crown here and everything. So, uh, anyway, so we have the, the basic book here, which you, you buy on its own. Uh, then you have the star map over here. This has all the colonized systems and whatnot. Um, when I, I, I primarily GM, so I am a huge fan of these big giant maps. I love putting these out in the middle of the table. Uh, I'm a face-to-face -face GM. I don't like uh, the online stuff, the, like the, the Roll20 and everything like that. That's just not my style. Uh, I think a lot of people really benefit from uh, online RPGs and stuff like that because they live in areas where maybe they can't hook up with people or what what have you. But uh, I am, you know, I, I, I am too much of a performer and uh, way too much theater for me. Uh, I prefer face-to-face -face RPGs. Now, however, these stay-at-home orders and everything, I may have to change my style. I'm also uh, fortunately blessed with a very large cadre of friends who are into role-playing games. Uh, we're all mostly adults. We have a couple... Uh, there's one or two teenagers that are involved that are related to us and everything. But for the most part, I play with mature adults that are my friends uh, to start with. So I don't go out and do cons. I don't play with strangers or anything like that. So uh, here's the, the, the game uh, screen here, and I'll talk to that about that in a sec. Uh, there are these magnificent alien dice here. Um, they, they also play a very specific role. And then uh, as part of I, I, I participated in the pre-order, uh, there's the alien cards here. Um, and these are, I found to be very useful. Uh, this is the published version of uh, Chariot 
of the Gods, which is written by Andrew Gaska. Um, I got to give a shout out to him. Oh. <laughs> uh, so this is awesome. So the <laughs> this sensor light in the garage uh, just went off because it did not detect any movement. So before I did the video, I should have set the... Uh, <laughs> tripping over trying to make my way back to the light there we go okay sorry for the interruption we'll go ahead and turn it so it will not turn off on us again like i said uh i am not a professional youtuber uh, i'm just going to be talking to you like uh like you are sitting here across from me enjoying a beer so uh cherry to the gods this is the only alien adventure that i have run uh, it's written by Andrew Gaska. He did a great job on this. I don't mean to sound condescending and everything because he's he's kind of a he's kind of a big name in the business and very big authority on Alien. One of the things I have to hand out to Andrew is is uh, he is on the uh, Alien RPG Facebook page, and he will if you post uh, questions about the writings or when I filmed my very first scene, the scene. From this book here, um, not filmed it, uh, but when I when we role played the scene, I gave like a big long debrief of it on the Alien Facebook page, and to have the writer comment on that was really cool. Um, this is a very cool age that we live in. Anyhow, uh, then uh, over here I have some plays that I use that I'll talk about later. So let's get into it and let's talk about the book here. So as you can see, and I'm doing this one-handed because I am not a professional YouTuber, the f very first thing that you see on this game is the outstanding artwork by Martin Grip. Uh, now, I hope I said his name right. Uh, Martin Grip has quickly become one of my all-time favorite artists. Uh, it would have been so easy for them to go ahead and just use uh, photos or pictures from the movies and everything and kind of cut corners on that, right? But instead, they enlisted this uh, artist, Martin Grip, to illustrate the uh, work. And for me, artwork in a role-playing game, it, it sells it for me. And Martin Grip is just as responsible for making me back this project as uh, Ridley Scott and as uh, the rest of the writers, the brilliant writers in this, and, and you know, obviously the great track record that Free League has with me. So immediately we're drawn into this. This captures the feeling here of the game itself, this dark uh, feeling to it. And then on the interior here, you have your uh, star systems and whatnot. Um, if you plan on playing an extensive campaign, Again, I really recommend the map. I love getting maps like this because I put it right in the middle of the table for the players, uh, and it's easy for everyone to look at. We can talk about systems and sh so they know how far it is from this system or how far are they from Earth or what have you, and it really is a good illustration for it. And although all that is here on the interior and it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful piece here, um, if you plan on playing the campaign, uh, definitely... Uh, Definitely go ahead and, and pick that up. The pages are very high quality. Now, there were some complaints online about the black ink uh, giving off a certain odor. Um, I Personally, I love the black ink because it um, keeps the game very dark uh, and the feel for it very dark. But the smell, it's almost like a new book kind of smell. Uh, and I did not mind it at all uh if anything it was almost kind of like it's like the new car smell uh so i actually liked it as a matter of fact now that i'm flipping through this i can actually smell uh the kind of new uh the new car smell so to speak from uh this book here everything is laid out in excellent uh excellent order here um this is a this uses the d6 i guess they call it the mutant year zero engine uh it is my favorite engine um, as far as rules. It's quick, it's easy, and I am a theater of the mind kind of GM. The uh, really cool play on words in this game is that the uh, GM in this is called the Game Mother. Mother being the uh, the computer from the original 1979 Alien. And uh, I thought that was great. I, I, I like that little piece of writing in this and everything. So, uh, All right, so there's basically... There's a number of ways that you can play. There's there's two modes that you can play Alien. And the one mode that 
uh, it, it, one of the two modes is what I think sets this game apart from all other games. And hold on, I, I have to get a sip of this beer here before it goes flat. Mm. Pardon me. Okay, so uh, you can play in what's called the campaign mode, or you can play in uh, what's called the cinematic mode. And for me, the cinematic mode is really what sets this game apart. Um, the cinematic mode, basically, the uh, the scenarios are one shots. Uh, they're designed to be very lethal, and um, they, you know, the, it's up to the players to survive them as they go. The other thing that's brilliant about the cinematic ones is each player has a uh, a little like a. Um, uh, an agenda that they have to follow and uh, so each one of the players has agendas and these agendas are wonderfully uh, working against each other so the players there's kind of like this uh, intrigue and this sense of paranoia uh, when you're playing these adventures and they are really cool uh, again the only experience I've had with it is Cherry to the Gods, Gods which is a cinematic scenario uh, but my group loved it so then within those campaigns whether you choose to do uh, cinematic or campaign and a campaign mode is pretty much what uh, I'm not going to bore you guys everybody has played campaigns uh, from you know first edition Dungeons and Dragons and and uh, all the way up to whatever you're playing right now so anyway uh, then there's there's a number of settings uh, that you can do you can do the frontier colonists uh, where they're out there trying to, um, you know, maybe you're playing as the group of people from like LV-426. The Space Truckers is uh, the where the feeling of the uh, first alien movie. And uh, Chariot of the Gods was very much a Space Trucker uh, adventure. It caught the feel of the original 1979 alien. Colonial Marines, obviously, uh, very much follows the... Uh, feeling of the second movie and then there's you can also play with um uh, corporate reps here and the, in the company reps uh the idea i think for me personally the idea of playing a continual campaign this one seems to make the most sense to me as it may be a company a Wayland yutani like a uh, troubleshooting team that moves around knows about the xenomorphs and, and what have you uh, okay so we talked about the cinematic play um, anyway, so I, I don't want to make this a huge long, gosh, just look at that art. I tell you, Martin Grip, what an amazing job you did. Um, but, uh, th there's, there's talents there. This uses what's called a D six system. So you'll have a base stat. So let's say like your strength, for instance. Okay. And you're, you'd have so many dice that you would roll for your strength roll. And then you'd have, uh, You'd have talents and you'd have skills that add to that. So, for instance, you would use like uh, your agility skill, which would give you maybe like if your agility is three, then you would roll three dice, right? Then you would uh, go ahead and have uh, your, let's say you were firing a firearm. So you'd have a ranged combat skill, which is two. So then you would add another two dice to it, right? And then the weapon itself, let's say you're firing a pistol and that adds one too. So you would add another die. Then you would roll all of these dice together and you'd be looking for sixes and sixes count as a success so in this roll here rolled two sixes and it's amazing if you've ever known me the way i roll i, I cannot believe that i rolled two sixes here uh but anyway this would be a success and then there are bonus uh things that i won't get into here um that uh, come into effect if you roll more sixes than, than are, are needed. Now, if at any time you roll a one on one of your yellow dice here, uh, it should be noted that these are like the stat dice that you use. And these are used for your skills and your um, add-on pieces. So if you roll one of these, then you it triggers a stress effect and you have, uh, you, you have, to, you have a chance that you can... Uh, freak out and you have to roll on this uh, stress table and whatnot so anyway uh very 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 cool so the more dice that you roll uh there's a higher chance that you can uh be fall victim to this stress and this is really what their fear mechanic is a lot of great role-playing games will use fear or they'll use sanity type of stuff and this is the the one that is unique to alien so if you fail a stress roll there's a table that you have to uh roll on and uh it's, it's the panic table 
and it's right here. Uh, and this is cool. It's just right up here on your on your DM screen and GM screen, excuse me. And uh, anyway, you would roll your dice and then add. You would roll a six sided die and then add whatever the player's current stress is to it. And uh, it, you know, depending on how bad it goes, the, the further down the table, very bad things start happening, and you can uh, panic and everything. So anyway, so uh, the more dice you add to your roll the more chances of you uh, succeeding, right? But the more yellow dice that you add, the greater a chance that you could uh, panic and what have you. And it kind of goes to show that the, um, that the, uh, th this is like to signify adrenaline and, and what have you, where you're kind of working at your, a you've got your A game on, but then, then there's also a chance that you could also crack and break. Uh, so, you know, your character classes are, you've, you've got, you know, Colonial Marine, obviously, uh, the Colonial Marshal. This, this was very reminiscent of uh, Outland, reminded me of the Sean Connery film Outland. Company agents, you know, we're talking, you guys know who these are. Uh, <laughs> it's our schmuck Carter Burke. And then our kid, we have to have a kid uh, archetype in here to represent Newt and some of the other uh, characters. Um, the medic class. And uh, the officer is more of like uh, the officer like Ripley, like her character, like a fleet officer or a ship officer. Uh, pilot, obviously, like Pharaoh. Um, and, you know, any other the any of these other pilots, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, roughnecks are very much like the Brett and Parker kind of characters from... Uh, from Alien, from the first Alien. Uh, scientist is pretty self-explanatory, somebody that's uh, going to definitely come in handy. Uh, okay, so anyway, listen, I don't want to go through the book page by page, but in the book, uh, there's all sorts of tables. The combat is pretty straightforward, um, and it moves quickly. My pet peeve is role-playing games that turn into very advanced board games the minute that weapons are drawn. And uh, one of the things I really enjoy about free league games is they still uh, play the theater of the mind. And I really, really enjoy that. And this combat is like that. So it moves very quickly. There's not a lot of numbers to it. But yet there's still a deep strategic element in it. Um, I also find that some game systems that have excessive talents uh, and or skills or what have you can be taken advantage of by certain players. And that's not what's going on here in this game. Uh, it's not what's going on in. Um, it's not what's going on in any of the free league titles and whatnot. So, uh, anyway, so talks a lot. The the game. I mean the uh, the book here. You could just spend weeks. It's it, this is a great time to pick it up because you could read this thing cover to cover and then uh, be prepared to run it. Uh, as soon as this uh, quarantine lifts and everything. Great monster section. The monster section focuses mostly on the Xenos. Um, but uh, th there's a couple other monsters that are mentioned and everything. But the system is simple enough for you to create your own aliens and your own creatures um, that uh, you could go ahead and, and have. A, you know, if a good GM makes their own stuff up and and a lot of these stories and scenarios uh humans wind up being the villains as well there's a really cool starter adventure in this i don't want to um don't want to show it to you remove any spoilers but it's called uh the oh, what is it the last days hope's last days hope's last days is what it's called and it takes place on Hadley's Hope, which is the colony from uh, the second movie, from Aliens. And it is taking place right before, or right before the Marines arrive. So your players are like the last survivors of Hadley's Hope. And uh, it is a very exciting scenario from what I've read. Uh, I haven't played it yet, but I can't wait to see it happen. And I believe uh, the map of Hadley's Hope yep, is on the other side of this, which is really cool. I'm doing this one-handed, and I apologize for the glare, uh, but it's my big bright light here in my game garage. So it just has the different levels of Hadley's Hope, and there's lots of nods uh, to the second movie. Um, anyway, so let's talk about uh, hmm. let's talk about the cards here. So uh, the cards here have characters 
from uh, Hope's Last Day on there. It also has weapons like uh, equipment and everything. So we can go ahead. It shows you a picture of what you have. And then it has the stats for the weapon on the back. So this is very easy. This is very convenient uh, for you to use when you're uh, playing the game. You just, if, uh, especially when characters are looking for weapons and not necessarily starting out with the weapons. Um, then the other function that it, the cards have is these initiatives here. You, the initiative uh, here. What is when combat starts, everyone is drawn, uh, everyone is dealt a card, and it determines what order you go in, whether you are a player, whether you are the alien, uh, what have you. And this system was pretty cool. I liked this. It was very quick. It was very easy. Um, the, I will say the cards and the dice, the game is designed, uh, it, it's not a cheap marketing ploy in the sense that it's designed where you can use any dice uh, that you want or you can use, you don't need these cards, you can use a regular deck of cards, but for a convenience, um, and for just the theatrics and the quality of them, the good quality cards are nice, they feel nice, they're thick, kind of a thick, uh, glossy feel to them. Um, I really recommend them. Uh, I, I loved them. Uh, Chariot of the Gods. So like I said, we talked a little bit about that one. This one feels like you are jumping into the 1979 movie of Alien. It is really, really cool. And I think what you're going to have to do with this game is if you have players that uh, like playing these superhuman, larger-than-life heroes, this is not the game for them. This is ordinary people that are put in extraordinary situations. Um, and that is, I think, in general, even if, when you're playing Colonial Marines and stuff like that, I think that's still kind of the overlying theme because that's a, that's a very important aspect of any horror role-playing game is uh, that, you know, that you're playing a vulnerable human being. And the human element in this is definitely, uh, it's definitely caught, even though you're playing a science fiction game. Uh, great job on this one. My group loved it. Uh, they all died to the last person, uh, but we had so much fun. And it was so different than anything that we had ever played before as far as the style of the game. Uh, here's some things that I recommend. Um, I recommend when you run Alien that you got to pick your players and make sure this is not for everyone. Uh, mm. What I mean by that is, is that if you have the level up treasure hunter people, this is not their game. If you have the people that like to joke and make one-liners every second, this is not their game. Uh, if you have, if you, on the other hand, if you have people that are... Uh, into dark story arcs, don't mind uh, playing a part in a story-based uh, campaign, then this is, uh, this is their game. If you have people that love mood in their role-playing games, then those are your kind of players. So the best piece of advice I would give you is as a GM, if you're planning on running this, get five of your players who can, uh, who can focus on the game, who can maintain mood, and uh, and who are not uh, combat and treasure obsessed or high tech obsessed? That it's all about that, that. Don't mind playing a story, and you're really going to have a great time with it. Um, what my group uses is so I, I do have to give a shout out to my. This is my xenomorph that I have made out of uh, motorcycle parts. I didn't do it. I my sister got it for me for Christmas one year, and I put it right in the middle of the table whenever we play. Uh, we use miniatures just to represent what rooms the characters are on in the ship. Uh, we did not use miniatures in combat or anything like that. Because like I said, uh, me personally and, and to a lesser extent my group prefer the theater of the mind. Uh, one of the things that we do to maintain mood, I am a huge music person. And I ran Chariot of the Gods here using, uh, it's not the best alien movie in my uh opinion but the soundtrack is definitely the best one was the covenant soundtrack uh the covenant soundtrack i bought that and played certain parts of that and but during most of the adventure here i used youtube videos of the uh sounds from the you you would be shocked at how many um youtube videos are out there just containing like uh, the sounds of the Nostromo. Uh, I was able to get the countdown where Mother is counting down for the destruction of the Nostromo. I was able to play that over a speaker. 
Um, I also was able to, uh, I love the music from uh, the video game, Alien Isolation. And there are tons of videos on YouTube just looping that music from Alien Isolation. So I had that playing in the background as well. So music is just great. Uh, one thing that I used to do uh, when I was a big Call of Cthulhu fan, I still am a huge Call of Cthulhu fan. And one of the things that we used to do at my in order to maintain mood is that, again, in horror role-playing, all it takes is one person cracking uh, one-liner jokes uh, at every single uh, encounter, and, it, and it'll ruin the mood for everyone. So one thing that we try and do is we would light candles uh, whenever we were playing the game. And then at the time when uh, we were going to take a break, we were going to go have a snack or whatever, uh, we'd blow the candles out. And then we could talk about what's going on at work or how's your family or, hey, there's this really funny story, uh, you know, that I saw on, online, whatever. So we're able to kind of take a break. But what we did is we didn't do it to where people only spoke in character when the candle was lit. We did where you know, we focused the conversations around the game itself. People stayed off their phones. Uh, we put the phones down and, and put them all on silent so people were not on their phones. And then uh, we focused the conversations to being in-game related. And we kind of tried to keep the humor to a minimum. Now, we did have humorous parts in it. There were parts where we did laugh. Like, you know, uh, there there's definitely comic relief in the Alien universe. We have Hudson, his character, uh, and even Brett. Uh, from the original Alien was very much a comic relief character. However, it was not over the top, and it was not slapstick, and it was appropriate to the storyline, so that works. Uh, so what I use is I bought four or five of these. These are really cheap, and you can get them on Amazon and what have you, but they are just camping lanterns. And so what we would do is uh, we would turn the lights out and then have these camping lanterns on. Sorry about the camera view here. There we go. And when the light was on, it, everyone was in the mood. We were we were on the ship and and we were playing uh, the game and everything. And then when we took a break to go get a drink or use the restroom or whatever, then we would just shut it down. And then that we would know that that signified that it was break time and that you could you know that you could speak and and talk outside a game what have you. Uh, so these are great and they also give a very electronic feel to them. Um, I have posted some pictures on the uh, Alien Role Playing Game Facebook page. Uh, of me and my friends with these lights here and they were just great and they're bright enough too to where you're able to see your character you're able to see the maps and what have you uh, but and it but still allowing you to dim the lights down and everything uh, the only other thing i want to do before i go is show you just the front this is what your players are going to be looking at here um you can kind of see my glossy reflection in it. But as you can see, it's got a very glossy uh, look to it. It's almost like a galaxy. The thing of it is, is it looks like it might just be pretty simple, but it's got a beautiful picture by Martin Grip there. This is quintessentially, it's not flashy. It's it's very dark. It's brooding. And quite frankly, it is perfect for what you would want. Uh, this kind of black dead space and yet this ominous threat that's behind it and everything. I really like this. Uh, I like the job that they did. So overall, what I would say is, should you go out and buy the Alien role-playing game? And the answer to that is, is absolutely yes. If you like science fiction horror, uh, if you like the Alien franchise, uh, if you like story-based role-playing, then absolutely stop what you're doing right now. Order this. Um, you can order it from the Free League website. You can order it. I think you can get it on Amazon and what have you. Buy this big old book. And while you're sitting around, uh, you know, social distancing yourself, get into this book and, oh, and, and put on your headphones and play the music from Alien Isolation or play, uh, you know, play the music from uh, Alien Covenant and just get into this book and uh, enjoy it. And then prepare yourself. And, you know, October's coming up. So this is a great, like, Halloween one-shot and everything. We adults don't get to trick-or-treat anymore. So we get to play horror games, horror role-playing games, whatever. Andrew Gaska is working on his next work, which is going to be another cinematic adventure uh, with a basis on the Colonial Marine Corps. So, I'm, uh, you know, I spent some time in the Marines myself. I'm really looking forward to to seeing what he has done with that. And uh, I can't wait to see it. So anyway, uh, thanks again for tuning in to my station. I'll have some more reviews up. 
And if you have any questions, I'll be monitoring the comments. I'm not a professional YouTuber, um, but if you want an honest answer about the kind of games that I play and what I'd recommend, I'd be happy to sit down and have a beer with you and talk it over. Until next time, we'll see you again on the most boring channel on the internet.